it's a great pleasure to be here, and uh, I hope I can say something that's useful, uh, and hope we can have some some good discussion. <clears throat> so. I'm going to talk about the Clinical Information Modeling Initiative. The first thing I want to talk about is why this is important to Intermountain Healthcare, which is uh, the hospital company that I work with. The thing that we're trying to achieve is to create interoperable sharing of data and information, applications, decision logic, reports, and knowledge. And I'll talk more about exactly what I mean there. And we're, we're trying to do something different than just share data, but we want to share data in a way that we can actually create applications that are usable in many different architectures and, uh, and be able to share that. So um, you look and it just looks like a storage closet. Uh, but actually there's a patient right there. Uh, this is a, an intensive care unit and uh, the baby is um, on cardiovascular bypass, on a respirator, uh, in an incubator that's temperature controlled. Uh, there are many um, lab tests, laboratory tests that are pending for, for, the, uh, for the infant. And the point of this really is, is to say Oftentimes now in medicine, we're in a situation, such, such a complex situation that physicians need help in providing the best care for the patient. Uh, the, the, number of, uh, the number of parameters that are considered when you're making a decision uh, surpass what the human mind can easily do. Of course, that's not always the situation. Uh, some, some medical situations are quite straightforward uh, and, and you can manage it. But other, other situations are complicated and you need the power of computers as a tool to aid clinicians in making the right decision. So <clears throat> there are two conclusions that we've come to about the use of computers at Intermountain Healthcare. One is uh, the complexity of modern medicine exceeds the, the native capabilities of the human mind. Uh, one, of the, one of the clinicians that we work at at Intermountain Healthcare, his name is Dr. Alan Morris. Uh, he's a pulmonary doctor and one of the one of the things that caused him to re realize this situation is that he, he began tracking his own decisions and he found that uh, in, in similar situations he would, do, he would provide different therapy. Sometimes he would increase the, uh, the peep on the machine at different time he would increase the uh, oxygen saturation or the oxygen percent uh, that the patient was receiving and and found out basically that when things got complicated it was almost random what what he would do and they started then computerizing the algorithm so that they would systematically do the same things and watch outcomes and determine the best therapy and they they were able to dramatically improve therapy that way. The second statement that from Clem McDonald is that uh, they found that they they can't teach people to be perfect physicians. They did a study 
where they use computers to help physicians order medications and uh, they found that the doctor's level of capability would increase while they were using the tool and when you took the tool away they quickly forgot the information and uh, would go back to their their previous level of, of competence. So <clears throat> the the real commitment at Intermountain Healthcare is that we absolutely have to use computers to provide the highest quality and lowest cost healthcare to individuals. And we have we've had a a tradition of doing that starting with Dr. Homer Warner who was the founder of the Department of Medical Informatics at Intermountain Healthcare. Uh, which has been providing this kind of computer support for over 40 years now. And so we have a long tradition of, of providing that kind of clinical decision support in our clinical systems. So these are some of the uh, programs that we have that are advanced decision support programs that are running every day on every patient in the hospital. And uh, each of these programs has been shown to provide higher quality care and to decrease the cost of care for the patients uh, that, that are being cared for. However, what we found, uh, the total number of, of these kind of processes that we have is about 150 or so. And each of these takes time to develop the actual computer uh, code. It takes time to then install it in a clinical environment to teach clinicians to use it, uh, to modify the program so that it's more accurate, and then to prove that you're changing outcomes and improving the quality of care. And Intermountain Healthcare we feel reasonably um, lucky or uh, blessed, if you will, to have uh, medical informaticists who can provide this kind of decision support. But even with the number of resources that we have at Intermountain Healthcare, we're reaching a point where we, we can't support any more programs because of the cost and the time to develop the applications. And so even though we have these 150 or so programs, there's an opportunity literally to do 1,000 programs like this or 2,000 programs because we've, we've done things that are the easy things that have the highest benefit. And for us to continue to get better, we need to do more and more complicated and, and apply the same rules to less, to less common diseases. And in order to do that, we have to get into a different paradigm. We need to get into a situation where we don't have to develop all of the logic ourselves, where we can share the actual decision logic with other institutions and with other healthcare organizations and uh, get into a sharing environment rather than an environment where we have to create everything ourselves each time. So we want to be able to share data and applications and, and, and the real focus is on sharing of applications. Uh, actual executable programs that uh, we can share with, with other institutions. And, and the and the goal is to, to have plug and play uh, interoperability. And I'll say a little more about that. And we've demonstrated what we're trying to do in one, in one small area. Uh, this describes some software that we created uh, for a demonstration during the, the HIMSS conference last uh, February in New Orleans in, in the United States. In that experiment, we had uh, four different uh, 
EHR systems. We had a Cerner system. We had uh, the Intermountain, Intermountain Healthcare's electronic health record system. We had uh, a database that was supported by Harris. And then we had uh, Hewlett Packard, which uh, provided uh, access to the VISTA database that's used in the U.S. Veterans Administration Hospital. And what we created on top of those four institutions, those four electronic health records, were common services that would provide data through uh, a fire, an HL7 fire uh, service interface, and, and then uh, provide that data with appropriate security to uh, a set of applications. And, and the applications were created as smart applications. Uh, this, the smart program is a program for making these kind of shared interoperable programs. Uh, we did a, a, a newborn serum, serum bilirubin application, a growth chart application, a cardiovascular risk application, and, uh, and some others. And those, those same programs could run and have identical behavior against any one of those EHR systems. The EHR systems, as you know, have very different database architectures. The Cerner system is, is a, their back end is a typical relational database with thousands of relational tables where the patient data is stored. Intermountain Healthcare has sort of a unique database that's based on an object-oriented approach using ASN1 objects. Uh, the VISTA database is using a cache database and uh, MUMPS programming uh, system. And, and so the services, however, are able to return the data in a common structure and in a common form so that the programs run identically regardless of which system they're obtaining the data from. And so that's the situation that we want to get to is where we have literally thousands of applications like that that can run against any system that supports standards for providing uh, that information in common standards-based uh, services. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. In, in, in the end, it's, it's that we're trying to uh, support standards that make it possible to share data and share applications that uh, will improve the quality and decrease the cost of, of healthcare. So SIMI is about trying to enable that environment. So in order to create that new paradigm, in order to create that opportunity for those applications to run uh, in, a, in a, common, a common way, you need a standard set of, of detailed clinical models that are coupled with standard coded terminology and then the definition of standard uh, application programmer interfaces for uh, the healthcare related services and then be in an environment where you can share the models and share the terminology and, uh, and the API definitions and then that leads to the opportunity then of sharing decision logic and applications based on that set of standards. The, the SIMI work is very specifically focused on creating the models and the binding of those models to standard coded terminologies. Uh, that's what SIMI is focused on, is, is just the information uh, processing part of this. The other parts, the, the specification of the APIs and uh, the service environment is actually an activity that's happening in, in other areas. For instance, the, the HL7 Fire is the standard that's being used for the, the standard APIs. So uh, the SIMI activity is, is very much 
an international and a collaborative activity. Uh, you can read the list of all of the, all of the different things, and this is, th these are all different groups that are working on information modeling. And uh, they're using different technology and different techniques, but all of them are trying to describe the structure of data and to describe how terminology interacts with the structure of that data. We, uh, within SIMI, wanted to, to involve everyone uh, in bringing together their best knowledge and their best techniques in creating uh, information models. And, and so we've invited and we've had participation from uh, nearly, all of the, uh, nearly all of the groups that are on this slide. And that's been one of the important aspects of what we're doing is trying to get everyone to work together. So the mission of SIMI is to improve the interoperability through shared implementable clinical information models. Uh, it's really focused on creating the information models. So very specifically, what we're trying to do is create a, a shared repository of detailed uh, clinical information models uh, where they're using a standard formalism and in this case, there are two formalisms that we're using. We're using ADL 1.5. ADL is the archetype definition language. And uh, UML, which is um, the unified modeling language. And the AML is a, is a, is a profile, uh, actually a series of profiles on, on UML. AML stands for the archetype modeling language. And uh, we're supporting those two different formalisms for representing the models. Uh, all of the representation of the models is based on a common set of base data types. So the, the data types being the primitives that like uh, strings and numbers and codes and dates and times, those kind of primitive data types. Uh, and then the models have formal bindings uh, to standard terminologies. And I'll say in a minute, uh, those terminologies that we're using are SNOMED and LOINC and RxNorm uh, and others as needed. And then the models with those associated terminologies will be part of a repository that's open to everyone and, and where the models are free for use. Uh, for any purpose, for commercialization or for uh, open source use or whatever the business model is, uh, they're open for that, for those purposes. The, the creation of the models is not limited to just use in electronic health records. Uh, it's all, the models are also meant to be used as the payload in uh, data services. They're also meant to be used as the reference when you create decision logic and when you have a, uh, a logical statement that refers to clinical data, the way you refer to the clinical data is by referring to the formal model with its associated terminology. Uh, we also want to support uh, decision logic, uh, the clinical trials data, uh, quality, measures to uh, be able to use the data to, to know whether we're providing high quality care or whether there are ways that we can improve the care. Uh, we also can use the models to normalize data so that if we're bringing information from different information systems, we can make a common representation so that you can do population statistics and population analytics across that whole spectrum of data. And then uh, it can be coupled with uh, things like natural language processing so that data coming from natural language can be represented and encoded in a standard way. So the, the overall strategy is one where, again, what we're trying to do is create 
this uh, shared repository of models and we're trying not to start over so uh, we want this to be in in a single approved uh, formalism so that's the models would be represented here using ADL 1.5 or uh, using AML as, as a representation but we would not start from scratch but go uh, use models that are coming from Intermountain Healthcare which are clinical element models uh, also uh, uh, clinical data models from from other from other sources uh, C CDA um, clinical document architecture templates uh, open EHR archetypes uh, there are uh, 13606 archetypes uh, in the in the United Kingdom uh, in the National Health Services they're using logical record architecture uh, standards and then uh, FIRE which is the HL7 uh, there are HL7 resources and so all of these sources we would we would take the model content that already exists in those formalisms, convert them into a standard format and place them in the repository. And then uh, from that repository, you might need to localize the content and, and the context for a specific area. Uh, for instance, if you were gonna use these models in Japan, there might need to be a translation to Japanese uh, so that this content could be used in, in, uh, for people who are speaking Japanese. But the, the other thing that's happening is that these models can be taken and uh, provided to translators that can produce many different representations of the models. Uh, they can represent the data using HL7 version 2 uh, representation of the models in the logical record architecture in, in XML, uh, HTML representations of the models, uh, again AML and ADL, OWL and semantic web technology representations, uh, 13606 archetypes, etc. And uh, again the models are based on uh, a common reference model and the, those common reference models then use standard terminologies to provide the semantic meaning of the models. So uh, how are we progressing on this? Well uh, we have a roadmap uh, of how we want to proceed to realize this vision of creating this the standard set of models. Uh, so we wanted to choose a formalism and, and we've chosen two now, uh, AML and, uh, and ADL. Uh, define the core reference model, including the data types. And then uh, define our modeling style. And the style is really made up of reusable patterns of models for given types of data. So you have a common pattern, for instance, for laboratory measurements, a common pattern for representing medical problems, uh, a common pattern for representing intake and output data uh, from people who are uh, in the hospital and on fluid restriction. Uh, and, and the style uh, will continue as we be begin creating content. Uh, we then create an open shared repository uh, of the models and we would first define requirements and then uh, find a place to host the repository and, and develop or, or use common repository software to actually set up a physical repository for the models. And then create, create model content, again starting with existing content and engage clinical experts to review the models to make sure that they are uh, accurate and, and clinically relevant. Uh, 
we then need a way to curate the model so that we don't just have uh, an arbitrary collection of conflicting and redundant models. We want a way of, of recognizing the same model and having only one model for a particular use. Uh, we need to make sure that we've, we've created a proper environment where people can share their intellectual property and not get into any kind of legal trouble over that. Uh, we need to find some funding so that we can support it. And then, uh, again, we need tools, one set of tools that can convert the model from one kind of modeling language to another kind of modeling language, and a second set of tools, compilers, or translators that will allow the data to be, the, the models to uh, go from creating different kinds of models to creating XML schema or Java class definitions or uh, other kinds of programming artifacts that make the models accessible to people who are creating software. So uh, the things that we've done already, again, we, we have ADL 1.5 as the initial formalism, and uh, that includes the archetype object model, which is the way that you can constrain the model, uh, a standard reference model, into different kinds of specific data models. And then again, the UML profile uh, called uh, the archetype modeling language which is developed as a set of UML stereotypes with XMI specifications and transformations, where those, those stereotypes and specifications really are representing exactly the same uh, information as is in the archetype object model. Uh, in terms of terminology, again, we're using SNOMAD and LOINC. Uh, and RxNorm, uh, there are lots of concepts that we need that don't exist in those terminologies. And when that happens, we will create new concepts, but offer those concepts back to the LOINC committee or to uh, IHTSDO the, uh, so that those concepts can be added to those terminologies as appropriate. Um, so, we actually have a repository up. Uh, there are a few models that, there are about 100 models that are available that you can browse uh, uh, from that website. Uh, there is also uh, a SIMI website where you can read more about SIMI and uh, the way that we're, uh, see history and uh, minutes from the meetings and uh, a calendar for meetings that are going to occur in the future. Uh, that information is now available on a, on a SIMI website. Uh, and so near term, uh, what we're trying to do is uh, make some high quality models, uh, put them in the repository, get the models used, uh, the models don't have any meaning if somebody isn't going to use them to actually make software. Uh, and so we need to get someone who is using the models and we can get experience and find out whether the models are useful, uh, if we need to change something so that they're easier to use and, and can be, uh, provide greater value, uh, document our experience and then improve our processes and continue to make more models uh, and improve the quality and, uh, and the, the, re the total collection of models that we're producing. So uh, that's all that I had uh, prepared to say right now.